Well, I'll uh, give you the rundown on the latest doings in viewer land, and then uh, anybody else has updates, we can cover that. Uh, basically, uh, we did a quick uh, hotfix viewer last week to deal with a mic on the Mac issue. Um, and the next big rele big uh, viewer release will probably be the Mate J plus K. That's got a fair number of uh, fixes and other changes. Um, and that just went out to RC uh, the yesterday. So hopefully, if all goes well, that'll be getting promoted at some point. Um, could be as early as next week if everything goes well, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, uh, a lot of a lot of interesting discussions and and planning going on. Um, you know, watch for uh, new graphics features coming this year, uh, improvements to to new user behavior, uh, and and making things more accessible. Um, and also, we're going to be continuing to pursue performance improvements beyond the current. Performance Improvements Viewer. Um, we are in the process of trying to get the Performance Improvements Viewer shipped. That is um, almost done with the last uh, bug fixes that we know of, but I think there may be one other one snuck in today. So uh, sometime, hopefully in the next next little while, we'll be ready to put that out as, a, as an RC candidate and get it QA'd and then uh, out the door to to you guys to bang on. I think you. I think people should be happy with the performance improvements. A lot of good work there. Um, noticeable improvements in frame rates in in a bunch of areas, especially with uh, rigged mesh rendering. And no, no, no. I think that's that's about all I got. Uh, Mojo, any announcements for this week? Oh gosh, I would love to, but I don't have anything ready to announce right now. I think uh, right now we're still talking in in, in vagaries here, and, and you kind of said it best. We uh, um, have been thinking about a lot of new, interesting graphics features for this coming year, and um, you know, I think you have brought up uh, several different ideas in, in a variety of different forms. And so, I'll um, I'll keep mum for this meeting. So hopefully, in the future, we can. Uh, you know, talk more explicitly about, hey, and we're doing this, and we're doing that. But other than uh, saying that we've allocated resources and time to work in this area of improving uh, the overall look and feel of, of Second Life, uh, that's kind of what I've got to say and what I'm sticking to for now. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Dave, I'm not sure how much we've talked about performance improvements at this meeting before is there anything more to say about it than we've uh, we've said already uh, we talked quite a bit about it last year um, uh, and I think since the last time we talked about it we've just been ironing out bugs and making sure that everything's ready to go uh, Euclid has been working very hard on fixing the frame stall uh, from the media texture update um, so that is something that we're treating as a high priority uh, fix before it goes to RC. I think Beck was the one who was very concerned about that one. Yeah, uh, and Y'all are probably interested in and in, in, in why that was happening. It's if you have uh, VSync enabled, um, then you don't get as unbounded um, uh, command buffer resources as you do with VSync disabled. Uh, and the um, call to update the media texture is basically put in a copy of the texture uh, and to the command buffer, which would exhaust all the resources and cause it to block until um, the command buffer had been flushed. Uh, whereas with vSync, 
off, it would just happily discard an entire command buffer without ever flushing it because, hey, there's nothing to render it to. Um, so the fix for that has been to move that update onto a background thread, the same that we've that we've been doing for uh, regular texture loading. So you get a separate command buffer that's not tied to swap buffers. Um, and the copy of the texture goes into that. Um, I could nerd out on that for a while talking about pixel buffer objects, but it's probably not a great use of everybody's time. Maybe for content creators another week. New Mac OS Monterey issue. I don't know, the only one I'd heard about was the uh, microphone thing. Is this something else? Memory leak. Oh, that sounds like fun. Is there a Jira for that? We like Jiras. It's easy to keep track of things with Jiras. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, if, if Corley's involved, I'm sure Jiras are involved. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I, I think that pretty much covers it from, uh, from our viewpoint. Uh, Ryder, do you want to say anything about what's going on in the... Uh, uh, the server side of things? Other than to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, other than to uh, reiterate Mo Monty's point that no, those are not, uh, those are not changes in the way statistics are calculated. Uh, we, we really are uh, running uh, more scripts per frame. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, what's going on with uh, third-party viewer land? Any interesting updates or new cool things? GitHub build pipelines. Yeah, we're we're definitely interested in those. Um, any any gotchas so far, or is it has it been pretty smooth?
Uh, viewer side animation overrides. I uh, don't have anything new about that. Uh, you know, it's it's on the list of possible future things, but uh, I don't have any uh, updates on it. Kind of curious what the latency is uh, for people who are asking for that. Yeah, so the only thing moving anything client side would solve would be latency between the server and viewer. Um, So, like, my first reaction to solving that problem is, well, just make sure that the latency is as close to zero as possible. Right. Um, right, because the viewer doesn't actually know that you're even walking forward until it hears back from the server. you've pressed move forward So if you're talking about replacing animations, is that at the level of individual agents, or is that sort of globally across everything? So you're saying every time every time you send me uh, an animation and I ask for A, you should give me B instead, right? Yeah, this sounds like the same problem that we have with the particle system. Like, like there's nothing that says the particle system can't just be state that's set on the prem by a UI. But the way it is, we have to have a script running that sets it. Right. Um, so there's this LSL call all set animation override. Um, I, I, I think what's being asked for is that that becomes something that can be set without a script. Uh, 
okay, if you set it without a script, then how then how do you set it? What's the what's the mechanism? Viewer hits the cap, okay. But I mean, how do you actually configure it? You've still got to have some way for the for the individual to say what overrides they want. So you've got like a table of overrides in your, you know, in some floater or something, and you're you're entering things there. Implement, yeah, okay. So the the current overrides that that we support in LSL, it's 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 based on the it's based on the kind of behavior graph, which is barely a graph. But you know the collection of behavior states that the server keeps track of, or it keeps track of, you know, are you walking, are you standing, are you running, and then based on what you're doing, it will send you, oh hey, you're running, you should be playing this animation, right? And the override says, well no, it shouldn't be that animation, it should be this other animation instead. So it's, it's like a map from behavioral states to animations. Um, but the problem with that is that a lot of animations don't involve the behavior graph, right? You could be you could be playing some, uh, you know, I don't know, hand gesture animation or something that the server doesn't know anything about. So is are we trying to override sort of potentially all animations, or are we happy just overriding things that are sort of hooked into the to the server? server state management all animations okay well uh all animations would also include like an animation that's built into a chair that you're sitting on um i don't think that's what coffee means is it okay so you mean all the animations that are in ll set animation override Yeah. Okay. So you you are actually talking about building on LL set animation override. You're not talking about sort of being able to replace arbitrary animations with other animations. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this really does sound like the same kind of ask as uh, UI for the particle system, um, if I understand it right. Which is like. Yeah, why don't we have that? Yeah, there's actually a long list of um, script calls that set state um, where the script isn't doing anything after that state's been set um, and doesn't really need to exist. Like target omega comes to mind.
All right, so people who are still using scripted AOs, even now that LL set animation override exists, what are they getting out of it other than just not having to get rid of their script? Oh, grief. Um, I mean, I can, I've got an AO that I've been carrying around for years, and every time I want to change it, I have to edit a note card. Okay, so if the behavior is fairly complicated, like you can potentially have dozens of different walks and you're randomly cycling between them, I mean, the, the, that behavior seems complex enough that it's kind of hard to just put it in a cap unless we've got some well-defined, uh, you know, well-defined API for how we define that behavior. It's it's not just, uh, you know, people need to be edit, able to edit a list that maps, you know, thing A to thing B. Okay, thanks for the link. I'll take a look. Yeah, I don't think the implementation would actually be doing anything with the uh, behavior graph client side. Um, it would just be setting the server side state without a script. Well, the 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 client has no physics. Uh, so it can't really tell you which animation to play. It also doesn't know if you've successfully sat on something until the server says so, and things like that. Yeah, so I totally misunderstood what, what this feature was asking for. Because um, I thought that uh, when people were asking for client-side animation overrides, they were trying to solve um, the latency problem, uh, which this wouldn't. Um, plus, you know, the latency keeps getting lower. And by latency problem, I mean like the, the, the round trip to the server, the lack of client prediction. Uh, 
for you know between the time that you hit the move forward button and the time that you actually start moving forward and playing the move forward animation. Uh, but with latency being closer and closer to what your frame latency is, that's less of an issue. Right. So it's that 200 millisecond ping. Why do you have 200 millisecond ping, and what can we do about that? Because there's a whole lot of things that would be better if the ping was lower. Maybe Starlink will fix everything. Right, uh, and it wouldn't play the animation too late because the message coming to say, oh, you're walking forward, comes at the same time as what animation to play. There's just going to be whatever your latency is going to be the delay between the time that you hit W and the time that you actually walk forward.
plugins on CEF to enable use of webcam and mic. Uh, comes from educators. Uh, we haven't really talked about kind of plugin security recently that I recall. Um, is there a is there an existing request already filed for that? Yeah. All right. So I, I guess I need to read the the um, docs about the the Firestorm animation overrider, but it it still sounds to me like you know if you want to be able to support multiple animations and you cycle through them in some complicated way and maybe you decide that each one gets five seconds or whatever I mean there's all this policy stuff right where does the policy stuff get implemented is that is that part of the information that kind of you send to the cap and then that gets sent out to all the uh, observers or is is that something that you're you want to be able to vary on the fly once you've just got this sort of list of animations or what Oh uh, yeah, well as I said, I'm pretty sure I'm confused, but uh, somebody's got to get me unconfused, or nothing's going to get implemented. So I don't know. Give it your best shot. I it still seems like if you've you know if you're trying to replace the functionality of some script that lets you you know do some one to many map and vary the timing and all this stuff, then that that data has to live somewhere, right? All that kind of all that kind of policy time varying policy information if it's not being executed by an LSL script then then how is it getting executed So that's it. The five seconds and the random are, are just hardwired in and all you want is the support for the list. I don't see how just implementing LL set animation override in a cap does what you want, because I mean that's still just a you know one state to one animation map. It doesn't give you any concept of managing a list. Uh, yeah, it does. It does what I mean? It? I mean, there's multiple calls it to it, but um, it gives you a list of. Gives you a list of anim like you can use that to set a list of animations um, to play based on your avatar's state. Mm, I mean, does it let you set three different standing animations? No, that would be an extra feature. Well, it sounds like what they're asking for, because everybody's talking about, well, they want to have all these different variants of how you stand or how you, you know, type or whatever. Talk. It's 
So it, it, it kind of seems like that's it's extending the semantics of uh, of L set animation over a. Uh, Yeah, but it is the kind of thing that if there was a viewer cap to do it, um, then conceivably a third-party viewer could make a system where people can be like, here's the list of like five different um, walks that I have, and you get to pick a random one. Um, okay. That would be entirely like user preferences. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there's a cap where you say this is how I want it to work, but then that that information also has to get out to uh, everybody else so that your appearance is consistent, right? Well, the simulator would handle distributing the the information. The, uh, I thought they were trying to do this on the client side, so the simulator was just was, uh, setting it on the just setting it on the. Right, so instead of a script telling the yeah okay the uh, the server what animation to play for which state, the client would use a cap. Is is there a feature request Jira for this? Ah, uh, point. Uh, uh, do you happen to have it handy? Ah, thank you. You did. Okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of providing the well. Everything except the cap definition. I mean, what if we just had a version of LL set animation override that let you associate? Uh, state with a list of animations instead of with a single animation does that address the same use case or no no that would be a neat feature though So how does this proposal get rid of all the AOs that are already out in the world? The the AO the the logic for the AO stops living in an LSL script and moves into the viewer. But only if people actually make the change and get rid of their AO script, right? Well, right. Yes. Definitely a much better experience than what you have now, where you have to find an AO script on the marketplace and then edit a note card or use some kind of HUD AI mm -hmm. or UI. I, I, I want to add something. I'd want to add something that would indicate to a script that animations have changed. Uh, because, for instance, uh, my AO will 
adjust the uh, the positioning of my walking stick as the animation changes. I believe it does it by polling, but yeah, and there'll always be oddball stuff that you'll have to have a script for. Right, right. I mean, I wouldn't want to control. I wouldn't want to control. Uh, have have the viewer. Hey, yeah, trying to get the viewer to to say, oh, this 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 attachment repositions when this animation plays would be unpleasant. I agree, Menu. also be useful to know which animation is actually playing. That there there is a request for that. I'm not sure where it stands. So an animation speed, um, is that something that you'd expect a script to set, or would you want the viewer to do some kind of analysis to say this is how fast this animation is going to move? Well, as far as I know, server-side doesn't open any of the animation files. Um, yeah, the server just thinks of the animation as an ID that it sends to people. It doesn't have any deeper knowledge. Yeah, so really you'd be talking about um, adding the ability for a script or a... Uh, well, we're, where we send the animation down... We'd, we'd have to include a, uh, a speed. I guess a better question is, or a different question, uh, would you want to be able to change the avatar movement speed to match the animation or change the animation play speed to match the 
avatar movement speed. Yeah, if you wanted to actually make it realistic for like a, you know, twice as tall as normal avatar, then, you know, the number of leg cycles per second would be lower, but the speed would be higher. I think it goes up as like the square root or something. So, you know, you, you the you'd actually have to vary both the uh animation play speed and the and the, you know, avatar movement speed. Yes, but but we're getting a little we're getting a little far afield of of the the initial question, which was which was uh, being able to set up a an an AO on the uh, 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 f from the viewer with, without the aid of a uh, without the aid of a script. Yeah. It's definitely turned into an exploration of the problem space. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we've still got a few minutes left. We can talk about this more if anybody's holding on to other topics. Go ahead and get them out. <laughs> oh, Ryder, where's your red flag launcher? <laughs> I haven't finished it yet. It's, it's to be it's to be done in my uh, copious amounts of of free time. Some context on that: uh, there are a great many Lindens who deliver a great many terrible puns. Uh, Awful and... puns. Writer was working on a red card launcher for meetings. So every time someone does something punny, they get flagged. I mean, we do have some abilities to get sort of bulk information about objects in a region, um, which I think are used for sort of some floaters that we have in the under the build menu. Presumably, we could build on to that.
only the skirts. This just sounds very traumatic for the servers. All right, folks, we're at time. Uh, i got to run off, and I will wish everyone a good weekend, and we will talk more later. Thanks for the feedback. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good, good discussion. Happy weekend. Yeah, thanks, folks.